Welcome to e Shikshana program. Myself, Dr. Shaila Shriyan, working as an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. The course is Advanced uh, VLSI Design. So, let us start with the mo module 1. So, what are the outcomes, learning outcomes? Differentiate between the full custom and semi-custom and programmable ASICs, evaluating their uh, suitability for specific applications and navigate the entire ASIC design flow using uh, tools for simulation, synthesis and labor to ensure the timing closure and recognize the significance of ASIC cell libraries, integrating IP blocks with the consideration for power and area, power and area impact and apply optimization techniques to meet the performance, power and area targets making informed decision for efficient design outcomes. So, let, uh, let me give an introduction about ASIC. Okay. So, ASIC, A, it is pronounced as ASIC. So, it is an application specific integrated circuit okay, and it is a specifically designed for given application or application domain. Okay. So, if you see this uh, figure, this figure A shows an IC package. This figure A shows an uh, IC package. So, this is a pin grid array. So, this is a the pin grid, this is a uh, this is a pin grid array you can see here. Okay. So, the pins are go through the holes in the printed circuit board. The pins are go through the holes in the printed circuit board. So, look at this figure B. The silicon chip itself mounted in the cavity under the sealed lid. Okay. So, the physical size of the silicon die, this is the silicon die, it varies from few millimeters on a side to over 1 inch on a side. But instead, we measure the size of an IC. How you are going to measure the size of an IC? The number of logic gates or the number of transistors that the IC contains. Okay? So, what is the gate uh, equivalent? So, you can see here the gate equivalent is nothing but the unit of size measurement corresponding to a 4 transistor gate equivalent example a 2 input NOR gate or a 2 input NAND gate is also consumes a 4 transistor gate equivalent. Okay? Now, what are the levels of integration? The first came is SSI that is small scale integration. So, the VLSI or the semiconductor uh, the industry has implemented first IC in 1975 in the early 1975s. Okay? So, and grown very fast since then. So, in 1975s, the uh, IC contained approximately 1 to 1 to 10 logic gates. IC contained approximately 1 to 10 logic gates with less number of transistors. So, that family is called as small scale integration family. So, the next family came up is medium scale integration family. So, the IC contained approximately is 10 to 100 logic gates. So, with bit higher number of transistors. Okay? So, the next family came up is the large scale integration. Okay? So, the IC contained approximately so, 100 to 1000 logic gates, 100 to 1000 logic gates. So, after that 
the new era of VLSI family was born. So, and it became popular well, very well because of the number of logic gates were very high. The number of logic gates are very high. So, approximately 1000 to 1 lakh. Approximately 1000 to 1 lakh. Okay. So, in VLSI, we were able to integrate multifunction on a single IC like uh, the microprocessor and memory well over a millions of transistor. That is why the VLSI has become successful and popular because of its compactness, because of its compactness and the millions of transistors on single IC and millions of transistors can be incorporated on a single IC. Okay? So, this VLSI is also called as ultra large scale integration in uh, the few countries. They call it as USLI also that is ultra large scale integration. So, especially in Japan. Okay? So, what are the implementation technology? Next is what are the implementation technology? So, earliest ICs used is bipolar IC technology. Okay? The logic gates, uh, the logic ICs used is either the transistor transistor logic or the emitter coupled logic. Okay? So, what is MOS? MOS is nothing but metal oxide silicon. This metal oxide silicon is implemented well before this bipolar transistor. So, transistor transistor logic means it uses a BJT, right? So, well before this bipolar transistor, but there was a problem in the oxide silicon interface. So, later these problems were gradually solved then the metal gate N channel MOS transistor is developed in early 1970s. Early 1970s. So, at that time the MOS transistor requires a fever masking steps. Okay, it requires fever masking step was denser and consumes very less power compared to equivalent bipolar IC. Okay, so, at that time for a given performance your MOS IC will be cheaper than the bipolar IC. So, it is led to an investment and there is a growth in the MOS IC market. Okay. So, in by the early 1980s, by the early 1980s, aluminum gates, because a transistor has a three terminals, gate, source and drive. Okay? So, in early 1980s, the um, aluminum gates are replaced okay, as a polysilicon gates, but the MOS name is retained as it is. So, the introduction of polysilicon as a gate material was a major improvement in the CMOS technology. So, what is a CMOS? Complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So, why CMOS is preferred? Because it consumes less power. Why CMOS is preferred? It consumes less power. Okay? So, the CMOS contains both N channel and P channel transistors. So, whenever N channel transistor is on, okay, the P channel transistor will be off. Whenever P channel transistor is on and N channel transistor will be off. So, that is why it consumes very less power. So, after that it came as bi CMOS. So, what is bi CMOS? It is a combination of bipolar and CMOS. It is a combination of bipolar and the CMOS process. Okay? So, the CMOS IC is cheaper than bi CMOS IC for the same function, but still the bi CMOS ICs are required for the special needs and this bi CMOS ICs are used in the cars, power electronics, telephonic circuits and so on. So, after that, is custom IC came into the picture. Suppose the 
a customer has some specific requirements right so the designer has to fulfill that requirement so then if the designer want to fulfill that the custom we have to go for the custom ic so custom ic means there will be a memory also will be there because we want to store some values right which memory has to be used there is a two types of memories are available dynamic random access memory or the static random access memory okay so dynamic random access memory it uh, the uh, it uses a uh, one transistor okay and the static random access memory the uh, six transistor static random access memory will be normally uh, used okay and these memories are used in conjunction with the custom ics okay so this is about the introduction to asic now what are the types of asics is available okay so the first one is full custom asic second one is standard cell based asic the third is gate array based asic in gate array based there are three uh, types channeled gate array channelless gate array structured gate array and also the programmable logic devices and field programmable gate array in the short form we are calling it as FPGA. So let us discuss uh, one by one. Okay. So full custom ICs. So what is the first point? It has written here. All mask layers are customized in a full custom ASICs according to the customer requirements. All mask layers are customized. So generally, the designer lays out. all cells by hand okay so some yeah of course there are uh, nowadays uh, the computer aided design tools are available uh, that is going to do the automatic placement and uh, routing so that also can be uh, applied over here and the critical timing paths are usually laid out completely by hand okay and full custom designs offers a highest performance and lowest part cost that means the smallest die size for a given design because it is according to the customer requirements okay so if you uh, gone through about microprocessor or a microcontroller it is a general purpose processor but here this is a full custom ic is designed for the custom requirements and what is the disadvantage of uh, the full custom design okay it include increased design time and there is a complexity and design expense and highest risk suppose if it fails okay so once again you have to do the entire process okay so the google every 3 months uh, they are uh, uh, going to offer for the tape out so they are charging for 10000 us dollars for 130 nanometer technology it comes around 9 lakhs so once your design is failed so once again you have to pay 8 to 9 lakhs and you have to uh, redesign the circuit so highest risk is involved okay then microprocessors were exclusively a uh, full custom but the designers are increasingly turning to semi custom asic techniques in the area as well why because nowadays uh, the microprocessors i told you know general purpose processors so already some blocks are available you can use those blocks and you can uh, design it further okay so the other examples of the full custom ics or asics are the requirement for the high voltage and analog and digital communications sensors and actuators and memory like dram or sram okay so next we move on to the standard cell asics standard cell based asic you can see here we are calling it as a short form as cbic okay cell based asic we are calling it as a cbic so that means s e a b i c k it is pronounced as cbic okay so it uses a pre designed cells that means for example and gates or gates uh, the multiplexers flip flops are known as standard cells if you see this uh, diagram 
So, these are fixed blocks that is 2, 3, 4 and 5 okay? and this is the uh, standard cell area, this is the standard cell area. So, the it uses a pre-designed cells that is AND gate, OR gates, flip flops are known as standard cells. Okay? So, the standard cell area can be combined with larger pre-designed cells. Uh, perhaps microcontroller or even a microprocessor, okay. So, that is called as mega cells. So, this mega cells are also called as mega functions, okay. Then full custom blocks, then system level macros or fixed blocks, cores or functional standard blocks. So, what are the important features? of this cell based ASICs that is all mask layers are customized that is transistor and interconnect and automated buffer sizing placement and routing ok you can go for automation and custom blocks can be embedded ok and manufacturing lead time this is very important right the manufacturing lead time is about 8 weeks. Okay. So, how the standard cell, what is, look at this, this is a layout of a standard cell. Okay. So, you can see here the standard cells are stacked like bricks in a wall. These are the standard cells, it is placed like, these are the standard cells, it is placed like bricks in a wall. And you can see here the abutment box AB. Okay. This abutment box AB defines the edges of the brick, it defines the edges of the brick okay. and the difference between the bounding box BB and abutment box AB is the area of the overlap between the bricks, is the area of the overlap between the bricks. Okay. Next is the power supply. So, this power supply is labeled as a VDD and here you can label it as a ground. The power supply is labeled it as VDD and ground run horizontally inside this standard cell on a metal layer. Obviously, we are using metal 1 or metal 2. So, here metal 1 is used metal 1 is used here ok. So, that run horizontally inside the standard cell on a metal layer that lies above this transistor layers, these are the transistors that lies above the transistor layers you can see here ok. So, there is a this standard cell has a center connectors the three squares labeled it as A1, a B1 and Z that allows the cell to connect to others, okay? that allows the cell to connect to others. Okay? So, this is a, a sample layout of the standard cell. Now, look at this uh, diagram, this is uh, routing the cell based ASIC called CBIC. Okay? So, you can see here, this is the expanded view, this expanded view look like this okay? and uh, there are important uh, the terms you have to observe is the row end cells, spacer cells and there is a power cell okay? and you can see here as cell uh, A dot 1 4 and cell A dot 2 3. Okay. So, this is nothing but the wall in the standard cell uses a flexible block. Okay. A connection that need to cross over a row of standard cell uses a feed through. So, in this diagram there are two feed through are there. So, one in cell a dot 1 4 you can see here ok and 1 in cell A dot 2 3 
okay now the width of each row of standard cell is adjusted so that they are aligned using they may be aligned using spacer cells next the power supply what is that the power supply or the power buses or rails are then connected to this vertical power rails using using this row end cells at the aligned ends of standard cell block at the aligned ends of standard cell block okay now the suppose if the uh, uh, the this is nothing but your uh, special power cells okay suppose if your vertical power lines can also be run on metal to it can also be run on metal to using this special power cells that will just connect it to either vdd or ground this is vdd vss is nothing but ground okay so this cell based asic okay we are calling it as cbic that is and also we are calling it as a standard a uh, cell based asic it saves time and money and reduces the risk by using pre designed pre tested and pre characterized standard cell libraries okay so next we move on to the gate array based asics okay so the gate array based asic the transistors are predefined on the silicon wafer okay so the predefined pattern of transistors is called as base array the smallest element that is replicated to make the base array is called as the base or primitive cell what as primitive cells it is constructed by using the basic gates and flip flops okay the top level interconnect between the transistor is defined by the designer in the custom mask that's why it is called as mga mga is nothing but masked gate array mga is nothing but masked gate array okay so how the design is going to perform here the design is performed by connecting pre designed and characterized logic cells from a library we are calling it as macros see initially the basic gates and flip flops are available and that are termed as primitive cells and the adders multipliers will be designed and that we are calling it as a basic macros and this basic macros and primitive cell can be used to construct a higher uh, order sub blocks and so on okay so after validation automatic placement and routing are typically uh, used to convert the macro based design into a layout on the asic using primitive cells so that's what i said computer aided design tools is going to take care of that so you can convert from the macro based design into a layout okay so there are three different uh, types of masked gate array the first is called as channeled gate array the second is called as channelless gate array and third is called as structured gate array or embedded gate array so we'll see one by one look at this diagram this is the channel gate array die so this is the basal see look at this diagram here so the whatever it is circled that is the expanded version over here so this is the basal so this figure shows a the channel gate array okay the important features of this channel gate array is only the interconnect is customized only the interconnect is customized so the interconnect uses predefined spaces between the rows of base cells and manufacturing lead time is between 2 days and 2 weeks 
manufacturing lead time is between 2 days and 2 weeks. The next is called as channelless gate array. Okay? The channelless gate array, look at this diagram over here. This is the array of base cells. You can see here, this is the array of base cells and this is the expanded version it is shown here. Okay? So, the channelless gate array is also known as channel free gate array or SOG array or C of gates array. There are three different names, channelless gate array, channel free gate array, SOG array or C of gates array. So, the important features of this, the masked gate array are manufacturing lead time is between 2 days and 2 weeks, okay, and only the some mask layers are customized, that is the interconnect, that is uh, the top few, okay, and there are no predefined areas set aside for uh, routing, instead the routing is over the top of the gate array devices, okay, very, very important. And then the achievable logic density is higher than for channeled gate array. Okay. The next is the structured gate array. So, you can see here, this is there is an embedded block over here and this is the array of base cells. Okay. So, the structured gate array is also called as embedded gate array or the master slice or master image. Okay. So, the important features of this embedded gate array are only the interconnect is customized okay, and custom blocks can be embedded, custom blocks can be embedded and this can be complete blocks such as a processor or a memory array or an array of different base cells better suited to implementing a specific function, okay, then the manufacturing lead time is between 2 days and 2 weeks. So, embedded gate array gives a improved area efficiency and increased performance of a CIBIC but with the lower cost and fast turnaround of an MGA because it uses a combination of CIBIC that is cell based ASIC and masked gate array. But one disadvantage of this the embedded gate array is that the embedded function is fixed. For example, suppose if we want to design there is a 32 k bit memory is available, but we need only 16 k bit memory that means half of the embedded memory function will be wasted, but still it is cheaper and efficient than implementing the 32 k bit memory using macros on SOG array. What is SOG? That is C of gates array. Okay? So, what I want to say is that that particular embedded function is fixed. If you have a 32 k bit memory, maximum you can go up to the 32 k bit memory. If you want only 16 k bit memory means the remaining uh, the embedded function will be uh, memory function will be wasted. Okay? So, the next is programmable logic devices. So, the programmable logic devices you can see here. So, these are we are calling it as a macro cell and these are the uh, lines we are calling it as a, a programmable interconnect. So, the important features of this programmable logic devices are no customized mask layers or logic cells okay? and fast design turn around and then a single large block of programmable interconnect. Okay? So, that is we have a erasable PLD, mask programmed PLD. Okay? So, a simple programmable IC is nothing but a ROM. A metal fuse that can be blown permanently is called as PROM. 
that is programmable read only memory the an electrical programmable read only memory uses a programmable mos transistors okay so whose characteristics can be altered by applying a high voltage whose characteristics can be altered by applying a high voltage so we can erase eprom by applying a another high voltage or exposing to the uv light that is uv prom ultraviolet programmable read only memory okay so there is an another a type of a rom is available that can be placed on any asic is mask programmable rom that is mask programmable rom so now we have a mask a programmable rom okay and the logic array the logic array can be placed as a cell on custom asic so the logic array is called as programmable logic array so we have a mask programmable rom and we can place the logic array as a cell on a custom asic so this logic array is called as programmable logic array so this programmable logic array it uh, the has the programmable and plane that is uh, the and array followed by programmable or plane that is or array okay so the amd people also introduces as pal that is programmable array logic okay so this programmable array logic also includes registers nothing but flip flops to store the current state information and we can use a pal that is programmable array logic to make the complete state machine to make the complete state machine so this pal has programmable and plane and fixed or plane okay so a matrix of logic macro cells that is usually consist of the programmable array logic followed by a flip flop array latch okay so the flip flop array latch means because in order to store the information okay so it uses the flip flop array latch the next is field programmable uh, gate array okay so you can see here the programmable logic cell and these are the programmable interconnects okay so the field programmable gate array is just larger and more complex than programmable logic devices just larger and more complex than pld's okay so the essential characteristics of the fpga are none of the mask layers are customized okay so a method for programming the basic logic cells and the interconnect and the core is a regular array of programmable basic logic cells that can implement combinational as sequential logic okay so you can write a program on combinational circuit or you can write a program for a sequential circuits like a counter okay and then you can the uh, download that program onto an fpga board and you can realize the functionality okay if you for example for a counter if you keep on applying a clock pulse it is going to show 0 0 next pulse 0 0 0 1 next pulse 0 0 1 0 so for that you have to write a clock divider a program separately along with the uh, the regular counter program and then you can able to see the uh, the leds changing from one state to another state okay 
So, similarly the combinational circuit you want to uh, see on that FPGA board for half adder or a full adder or a multiplexers that also you can able to see on the uh, field programmable uh, gate array. So, once the power is off whatever the program you are loaded onto the FPGA board, so it will not be there, it is vanished. Once again you have to uh, turn on the FPGA board and once again you have to load the program onto the FPGA board. Okay? So, a matrix of programmable interconnect surrounds the basic logic cells. So, the programmable IO cells surround the core and design turn around is few hours. Design turn around is a few hours. Okay? So, this is the introduction about the types of ASICs. So, next we move on to the topic called ASIC design flow. Okay? So, you can see here I have given a start and finish. So, between start to finish what all it is there? Design entry, then logic synthesis, then system partitioning and then we are going to do the a pre layered uh, simulation okay? and then floor planning and placement, uh, routing. We are going to do the circuit uh, extraction that is nothing but resistance and capacitance and we are going to do the uh, post layered uh, simulation. So, the uh, this part is referred as, uh, yeah. so this part is referred as this part is referred as the physical phase, okay? whereas this part is uh, the, this part is referred as the logical phase. You can see here logical design and this is physical design. Okay? So, design entry. So, using a hardware description language that is HDL or the schematic entry. Next is logic synthesis. What it is going to do? See, you are going to write a code over here and it is going to produce a netlist. Logic synthesis produces a netlist that is logic cells and their interconnections. So, next is called partitioning. Okay? So, dividing a large system into the ASIC based design. So, we are going to do the uh, pre layered simulation to check where, whether that uh, design functions uh, correctly. Now, after that uh, if it is correct then we are coming for a floor planning. So, floor planning is nothing but arrange the blocks of the netlist on the chip okay? and then it comes for uh, the placement. So, it decide the locations of uh, cells in a block that is a placement and then routing. So, make the connection between the cells and the blocks and we are going to do the circuit extraction. It determines the resistance and capacitance of the interconnect. Okay? And then finally, we are going to do the post layered simulation to check the design still works, design still works with the added loads of interconnect. So, you can see the diagram. So, the detailed explanation I am going to discuss in the next slide. So, whatever I have discussed is that is in a simplified way. So, let us discuss in depth. Okay? So, the, the same thing uh, first is design specification that was not there in the previous slide directly it started from design entry and then the design entry and then functional simulation. If it is functionally correct then only it will go for PPR that is planning placement and uh, routing. Okay? So, if it is the it is not correct functionally then it will go back to the design specification itself. Next, so then the design is routed. Okay? So, if it is correct it is going for a timing simulation. If it is no, okay, then it will initially go back to the a few iterations of first it will go back to the few iterations of the planning placement and routing. If it still fails then the design entry is revisited. Okay? So, it will come back to here. Next, if your timing specification is met, then it will directly go for fusing or a fabrication into the chip. 
okay now if it is no then the first time it will go back to the planning placement and routing only if it is no then again the design entry is revisited so it is going to come at the design specification only okay so let us discuss in depth about this uh, the vlsi uh, design flow first we will discuss about the design specification look at this so design specification okay uh, these are the components design entry functional simulation ppr timing simulation and uh, fusing or fabrication into the chip okay so what are the design specification so first is the algorithm to be implemented in detail with mathematical representation so the algorithmic specification determines the complexity of the design and gives an idea of number of gates required for the design next is number of inputs and outputs in the design and number of bits in each of them each of them okay so this specification takes into account the type of interfacing to be used in the chip for example for interfacing an analog to digital converter all the data lines and the control lines inputs and outputs are provided in the chip and it also determines the number of pins are used in the chip next the number of bits used in the internal arithmetic operation so this specification takes into account that the if there is a uh, the overflow or underflow and to reduce the uh, accumulation of uh, the rounding of errors to uh, meet the desired accuracy so in the hardware implementation of an arithmetic intensive algorithm the word length of resources such as adders okay then multipliers and registers has an algorithmic level of optimization in order to meet the required accuracy and the minimization of design cost to meet the given performance constraints okay next is the number of clock signals to be used in the design so this is required because the clock routing requires a dedicated channel which must be considered during the fabrication of the chip okay next the maximum clock frequency to be used okay so this defines the speed of operation of the chip the maximization of the operating speed okay so it uh, in the vlsi design because since in the vlsi design the speed is more critical that means if there is a design with high speed then there is a uh, the uh, delay will be minimized so we can minimize the critical path also so the since the uh, the maximization of the operating speed is uh, to be taken care in the uh, the uh, maximum uh, clock frequency we have to be we have to use it okay then a area of the chip for the portable type and miniature type of systems okay the chip size should be as small as possible right so the since the number of gates or the millions of transistors can be incorporated on a single ic so the main optimization goal is area of the uh, the chip in the ic design so the chip size should be small next is called the power dissipation in the chip okay so the demand for portable semiconductor devices have also raised the demand for more power efficient devices uh, due to the short battery life of these devices right so in a vlsi uh, design so we have to do the circuit level power saving we have to modify the circuit design okay how we can modify the circuit design such as reduction in switching activity so the design specification is completed the next is called as design entry 
okay so in design entry first of all the architectural decisions like the number of sub blocks to be used with their functionality the interconnect such as adders multipliers dividers and whether the design is a serial or parallel in each block okay and whether the design is pipeline or what are the number of stages in the pipeline and operations in each block to be uh, taken okay so the design entry are of two types that is schematic entry and the hardware description a language in schematic entry the circuit schematics are drawn okay using schematic uh, the on schematic sheets using graphical user interface so the schematic library is available it consists of the symbols of basic gates and flip flops that are termed as primitive cells okay so you can see here uh, these are the basic gates okay so initially the components are uh, invoked and the interconnection is done between the components that is and to inverter okay so you can see here the interconnection is done between the components and naming of input and output is done so you can see here this is input and this is output naming of input and output is done so in schematic entry okay so the hierarchical design is approached what is hierarchical design larger design are divided into sub designs okay so that means the basic macros uh, like adders and multipliers are designed and kept in the cell library now we want to design for higher sub blocks so higher sub blocks are designed by using basic macros and primitive cells okay now higher order macros are designed and kept in the cell library like that the final design is approached in an hierarchical manner okay now what is a hdl so there are two dominant languages both are aiming at a digital hardware that is a verilog hdl and vhdl okay so the digital design is expressed either in structural flow or the uh, data flow style or the sequential behavior okay so in the vhdl the interfacing part of the design is separate from the description part of the design okay so the structural part is expressed okay is described by using a statement of component instantiation okay and component declaration is necessary for the the interfacing part of the component okay so is interfacing part of the component and the data flow part is described by using a component instantiation uh, the data flow part is described by using a continuous Uh, the concurrent signal assignment statement the data flow part is described by using a concurrent signal assignment statement and how we are going to uh, i mean uh, express for a, a sequential uh, behavior the sequential behavior is always going to use a process statement the process statement is used as a case statement okay so the case statement that means it is going to switch to a Uh, a particular uh, branch okay based on the value of the case expression okay and then the uh, verilog hdl so this verilog hdl the each net is assigned to have a four different values that is 0 1 and x and z okay and uh, the uh, structural part is uh, uh, expressed by using a, a module instantiation and uh, data flow part is expressed by using a continuous assignment statement whereas in vhdl it is concurrent signal assignment here it is continuous assignment statement okay and then finally the uh, process 
uh, it is using uh, always statement. Finally, the process statement it is modeled by using always a statement. 